Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Rants, a video series where I stand upon my metaphorical soapbox pedestal and complain, rant, rave, scream, holler, and yell about everything below me that just annoys me, bothers me, and makes me go full froth. Well, today's actually a special video because today I'm going to be doing a list. Now, I'm not a big fan of top 10 lists. I've multiply said that half a dozen times. However, this is a special list, and it's a list that I'm going to be ranting about, because this is a list of the 10 Transformer figures that really need to be rebooted, because they didn't get it right the first time. And yes, if you haven't figured it out yet, this video is directed at you, Hasbro. So without any further ado, allow us to start at number 10. I'm looking at what I like to call the annoying thing of Energon. Transformers Energon had one of the coolest Optimus Prime gimmicks ever. Optimus combined with drones. That was cool. You want to know what isn't cool? The fact that you couldn't make them look even close to show accurate. A little bit more time in R&D, a little more stabilizers, a little more, uh, I want to say... Scaling would be the right word, and you would probably have a winner here. Because the figure itself, while it does look cool when it's combined, it doesn't when it's not. Now, I know it's pretty much close to show accurate, but you could do a little more tinkering with it. So there's some advice. Try that. Number nine is another favorite from uh, sorry, another favorite of mine from the Energon saga, Superion Maximus. Yes. One of the three combiners that appeared near the end of the series after Megatron discovered the Super Energon and pretty much blew the one statue away. And why is this one on my list? Well, technically, all of them would be, but Superion Maximus just, just has the horrible look to it. Now, I understand you're going for show accurate. Gotta commend you for that. You really didn't do that bad of a job trying to get him show accurate, at least to a point. But playability-wise, uh, somebody did not do physics to understand how playability and building something works. So, why the problem with Superion Maximus? It looks weird. It seems off. The fact that it just doesn't look right. And if you wanted to make it show accurate, you could have spent a little more time scaling it to the proper heights, dimensions, and... What's the word I'm looking for here? It starts with a, oh yes, um, making it look just a little bit more show accurate. While I do commend you for trying, you failed miserably. Go back to the drawing board on that one, Hasbro. Number eight. Ah, now we're getting into some good stuff. Transformers Robots in Disguise. I enjoyed the whole Optimus Prime combining with Ultra Magnus thing. That was cool. That was amazing. First time I ever saw a combiner in my life. Here's the thing. You could make it a little better. Because it's got far too many pieces. You basically have to blow Super Mag uh, Ultra Magnus to pieces in order to combine it with Optimus. Whereas a simple transformation would probably not be a bad idea for that. Or at least figure out a way to make the pieces work a little better and unlock a little better. And by all means, actually combine a wee bit more uh, better. The word of the day is better. Let's see, what are we up to now? Oh yes, number seven. And what could possibly top that? Hmm. Well, I got one for you. What could possibly top that? How about Transformers Cybertron Brush Guard and Overhaul? Because I reviewed Brush Guard, and I have a major complaint. Now, while I will admit this thing is practically show accurate, the arms and the shoulder flaps, you could have done a little more development on that just to give them that little bit of extraness. How about a swivel joint where the arm, where the shield flaps come up? Where the shoulder flaps come up, how about a little bit, you know, how about like a turning joint there? And then make it so that the arm actually has some decent articulation. It doesn't look like it's permanently crocked into a certain dimensional turn. It looks stupid, but still, 
is show accurate, but could do with a little bit of rebooting. Add it to the Generations line. Might help. Number six. Wow. We're at number six already, huh? So what could possibly boil my piss at number six? Beast Machines. Beast Machines. Beast Machines. You didn't make any of them show accurate! Cheetor! It's almost... My God, that thing is taller than a freaking Power Rangers Megazord from Bandai. Freaking fragile as all hell. You can't move it. Has no articulation. I got one for my birthday the one year. It lasted like maybe six months to almost a year. And then it just broke. Because pieces started wearing out on it. And Optimus Prime. That thing wasn't even anywhere near so accurate. Except for your gigantic hulking massive ape one with rapid punch attack. How about one that actually looks like Optimus from the show, and actually looks like Optimus from the show? You actually had a decent one with that original one, but it didn't look like Optimus. Make it look like Optimus, damn it! And isn't that bad of an idea? But seriously, the entire Beast Machines toy line was garbage. None of them looked accurate to the show that you were trying to sell the kids on. Hey! Check out Beast Machines. Here are the toys for it. They don't look anything like that. Well, that's not our problem. The entire Beast Machines line. Pick and choose some of the good ones. The Maximals and, oh, what was it? Oh, yeah, the Viacons. The Vehicle uh, Combiner, the Vehicle Transformations, Megatron's group. Pick some from there and some from the Maximals and fix it. It's not that difficult of a concept. There's more of the Generations line for you. Make amends for what you screwed up at the halfway point. The halfway point. <sighs> Your Studio Series comes to mind, especially Studio Series Bumblebee. I know a particular reviewer that would probably have a field day telling you what's wrong with that one. he would probably go blue in the face screaming at you louder than I could. The figure sucks, the figure sucks, the figure sucks. But, because that's not the only thing that I have to complain about, it's not the Studio Series, but part of your Generations line... It's that annoying hot shot. So this is a twofer for number five because Bumblebee from the Studio Series and Hot Shot from that Generations line. Because that Hot Shot figure transforms pretty much like you would expect a blind Transformer to. Doesn't know where it is. I mean no disrespect or anything, but honestly, it's like a Transformer that doesn't know it's a Transformer. That's what I mean by that. A literal Transformer... That doesn't know it's a Transformer. Hence, a blind Transformer. It doesn't know what it is. That's basically what that hotshot was. You couldn't transform it without breaking half of it. It's annoying. It was stupid. Needs a reboot if you want to make it good. Otherwise, just let it go into the garbage next time. Number four. We're ready? We're at number four now. And that is going to be... My all-time biggest annoyance. And that is Perceptor from Transformers Armada and from Transformers Energon. Because you didn't make it accurate enough. Now look, you had to spend the money for the three Minicons. And while I will admit you did a good job with the three Minicons, you could have, and I want to stress this part here, could have done a wee bit better with their combined form articulation in the legs would be nice you had elbow articulation for the armada figure but in the wrong direction no no i'm not joking the wrong direction they went the wrong way genius and it wasn't just the concept of turning it around because you had to put it so that the little exhaust pipes are facing toward the outside of the body, not the inside. So, fail. And as far as the Energon one's concerned, same issues. Articulation. 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 Leg articulation. Elbow articulation. Both would be greatly welcomed in those. Not exactly too difficult to do, but still would be welcomed. Number three, Transformers Cybertron Wing Saber. I had issues with this thing. 
For starters, every time you transform it, you end up knocking off its swords. No matter how you put them on there, you will knock them off. You will knock out the hilts for said swords from the tail of the plane mode when you transform it. The figure could have used a little bit more of R&D, even some tinkering on your end to make it better. But that's nothing compared to the next two, because the top two are the two that you really need to improve upon. Number two is actually tough, because out of the two that I have left, and believe me, they're perfect examples, I kind of like this one for number one, but it's number two for a reason. And that is the Transformers Armada Optimus Prime. The figure can cause fires. Let's get that out of the way. The figure can cause a fire. What moron at Hasbro thought it was a brilliant idea to put an RF chip and an RF thing in a toy for kids? Did you not realize that's how remote controls work on televisions with an RF signal? Did you not figure that out? If you have it, which is marketed for kids, <coughs> mind you, kids are going to be playing with this. What do kids usually sit around with their toys? A television. At least back when this came out. Did you ever think, just maybe, maybe, it was a bad idea? It changes the base into the legs. I will get back to that in a moment. But it can also cause a fire if you're changing the channel and it senses a signal. And the legs. The trailer changes into the set of legs. The gigantic hulking pyramid that you sit Optimus's torso on. It's a brick. Who the fuck wants to play with a brick, Hasbro? That thing costs like 40 bucks. I don't see parents pissing out $40 for a figure that's a brick. A brick, Hasbro. But a simple change in the figure. How about making the trailer smaller? Giving it articulation in the knees like it had someone in the show. Making it so that it actually looks more show accurate. And making it so that people don't have to worry about having a fire extinguisher near it when they have their kid watching television! Somebody in R&D should have been fired for that one. But, that's a pale comparison to number one. And yes, I know what you're thinking. How is fire a pale comparison? What, is the next one cause a black hole? No. No. The next one is a figure that can't even stay together past one transformation. You're rolling the dice as to whether or not it's going to survive, changing it from its beast to dino mode. Or sorry, from its beast to robot mode. And if you haven't figured out which one I'm talking about yet, I'm talking about Transmetal Megatron. I complained about this before, and apparently you didn't hear me loud enough. Apparently you didn't hear me, so I guess I wasn't loud enough. Fix the figure, Hasbro! You have a chance. You have a Generations line. How about instead of spending money on stupid ideas like the Cyberverse figures that you're half-assing, you fix some of the older ones. The collectors will buy them in droves. Especially Transmetal Megatron. The one that was shown for the longest time in the Beast Wars series. Because the problem with this one... The figure can break extremely easily. I know. How does this be fire, right? Because you just spent $16. That's what this thing was going for back in the day. $16. I remember because I tried saving up for him and Optimus. Happily, I couldn't get either. I say happily because I ended up getting an Optimus at a yard sale. Sadly, he joined the Matrix. But Megatron, I could never get my hands on. No matter how hard I tried. And they're commanding high prices on eBay now because none of them are surviving anymore. The figure breaks, 
Hasbro, it snaps apart before you can even play with it. Changing it from dino to robot, you run the risk of snapping the center part, snapping the arms, breaking the plastic, because somehow you decided to cheap out on the labor for it. What did you use? Chintzy plastic? The thing's a transformer for kids. It's meant to be played with. You're running the risk of it breaking, just changing it. At $16, and that was back in 1990 money. That's a lot of money now, Hasbro. I am offended by the fact that this toy even got past quality control. You had no right to do that. This one, above all else, deserves a second chance in the sun. Show accurate. Make the head the right size. Make the body the right size. Make it so it doesn't break apart just by turning the figure from its dinosaur into its robot mode. Those are things that you need to improve. And that's my top 10 Transformers that really deserve another shot in the sun. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Did you have a Transformer that you really wanted to have as a second chance? One that you really wish would have been better when you were growing up? Or did you just enjoy them all as they were? Let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been Andrew Rants. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.